nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Live from Spain, this is The Drive Home with Harry Waters. Hello there, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Teachers Talk Radio. Um, we are live. It is your drive home, um, or maybe you've been home for a while already, but thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Um, very shortly, I'll be welcoming... Um, I'm not sure how to say this. Definitely a world famous guest, but um, he's he's someone very special. Um, someone I've been uh, a, a huge fan of for quite a long time, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he'll be here very soon. Before you know, I'm going to build up the tension there. Of course, before he does uh, arrive, before, I, I am going to invite him in as a speaker. Before he is here, let's quickly run through what we've been up to this week. What have you done? What have you been doing? Anything exciting? Um, my week so far, oof, what's happened? It's been getting back to real life, really, after the, the Easter holidays. Now, I don't know um, what Easter's like where you are, but here it's absolutely mad. Um, there are processions through the streets. Uh, I, I really recommend everyone checks out Semana Santa in Seville. It's an experience that I think... I think anybody can enjoy, whether you're religious or not. I personally am not religious, um, but I do absolutely love the the ritual of it. You know, hundreds and thousands of people in the streets walking behind these giant processions. And, you know, I've never seen Spanish people so quiet in my entire life. You know, they kind of stand there and they watch these processions go past just in absolute silence. And I don't know, it's, it's something that's really unique to me because... If you've been here in Spain before, or you've you've been in Spanish culture, you'll know that you know they, there can be a room of six people and there are nine conversations going on at the same time. You know, even though there's only a few people, they are very, very, very talkative. Um, so getting back to normal from that has been it's been good. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I did do some work on on Saturday night uh, over Easter. I, I thought I'm going to get ahead of the game. It made my Monday a lot easier, um, a lot smoother, which was nice. And then yesterday, I decided, you know, as a as a, a freelancer, I I didn't have any classes that day, and yesterday was a bit of a checkout day for me. I didn't really do enough. I had a bit of a headache and decided to go full man and just not be able to do anything, you know, not be able to to look up at the sky or anything. So, you know, yesterday was a bit of a chill day, just preparing stuff because as you know it is earth week this week um with earth day coming up on friday it's like renewable english christmas so there's been loads of stuff to prepare obviously no wrapping um because that's not renewable um but you know we've been getting things ready for this friday we've got a big class on friday all about climate action we had a lovely chat with with kids against plastic yesterday um which was live on instagram you can check the interview out again obviously um, and yeah, it, it's just been pretty crazy and everything ready. We've got a big festival at my daughter's school as well. So it's been lovely getting into that. Um, but today we have um, an amazing guest with us. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling. If you could see me right now, I've got a huge grin on my face to, to be able to welcome Jason on. And, and I will welcome him on very soon, better known as uh, Fluency MC. But before that, we're going to shoot off for the news, so stay where you are. Don't go anywhere, um, because when we come back, we've got the original ELT YouTube sensation, as I like to call him. Uh, he'll be here, uh, and we'll be speaking to him very, very soon. So stay where you are. This episode of Teachers Talk Radio has been made possible with support from Witherslack Group, the UK's leading provider of SEN education and care. They're here to support you too through an ever-growing offer of free resources, including webinars, podcasts, articles and events aimed at supporting teaching professionals like you. Visit their website at www.withaslackgroup.co.uk to find out more. Are you looking to take your phonics practice forward? Then Little Wondle Letters and Sounds Revised is the programme for you. 
created by two schools with an excellent track record in phonics. Little Wondell Letters and Sounds Revised will help all children become readers and ensure no child is left behind. The programme offers complete support for your phonics teaching, alongside classroom resources and fully decodable readers from Collins Big Cat. To find out more, follow at Letters Sounds on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram or join a free briefing by visiting littlewondellettersandsounds.org.uk. Introducing Bulb. With evidence-based learning at the forefront of education, let Bulb digital portfolios help reshape your educational practice. Bulb helps teachers teach and learners learn. Bulb is an easy-to-use, fully accessible digital platform that captures students' digital learning assets in one place, allowing them to evidence their learning and reflect on their growth. Our dedicated team of education specialists are on hand to ensure the bulb fits seamlessly into all of your teaching practices. Come take a look and get a free account at bulbapp.com. Introducing Autism Aspirational Futures, a virtual SEN conference for parents and carers. Do you work with parents or carers of students with autism? If so, this free virtual conference from Witherslack Group can support them and you. Providing inspiring talks from leading experts, offering practical advice on supporting children and young people with autism and associated needs. This very special event will take place during Autism Acceptance Week and is sure to be an enjoyable occasion for everyone wanting to develop their knowledge, understanding and celebrate their children's amazing superpowers. Don't miss out! Register for free at witherslackgroup.co.uk today. With a Slack Group, the leading provider of schools and children's homes for children with special educational needs. This is Teachers Talk Radio, and this is Teachers Talk Radio News with Gail Glenn. In Bath, a new 10 week scheme has been launched to encourage children to become care home friends. It is aimed at children aged 5 to 14. The scheme has been introduced by Care Home Friends and Neighbours and is funded by Dunhill Medical Trust, the National Lottery Community Fund and the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. Director of My Home Life England, Tom Owen said, Intergenerational work can boost children's self-esteem, broaden their world view and improve empathy and understanding of others. Both children and older people can get so much out of a relationship with each other, but their contact can be very limited. This project helps to build links with care homes, a part of the community schools might not otherwise engage with, and equally helps care homes feel more connected to their local community. We've seen so much joy fun and energy in all our local projects and we hope our Become a Care Home Friend Challenge will spread this even further. In Northern Ireland, Article 4 of the Education Order 1998 enables teachers to use force to stop pupils engaging in disruptive behaviour. This legislation is out of step with the United Nations standards on corporal punishment and a recent review has recommended that this should be repealed at the earliest legislative opportunity. Rachel Hogan, the Children's Law Centre's Special Education Needs Representative said, there can be no doubt that the existing framework and guidance has led to instances where the human rights of vulnerable children have been seriously violated. The grievous impact this has had on the children affected, as well as their parents and carers, has now been brought into the public domain and acknowledged. Michelle McElveen, Education Minister, has said she endorses the recommendations in her department's report. This has been your latest Teachers Talk Radio News with Gail Glenn.
This is Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods, your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. Hello, this week I'm going to talk about improving your skills. I listened to the morning show with Dorian Brown last Friday and he was discussing teachers' tech skills. I'm not here to start a discussion, that's his job. However, this week I investigate can you get better at tech for free? Is there any CPD out there that doesn't cost a fortune? The answer is yes. There's a lot of online self-paced courses out there and even some supported by bursary funding for cover to get you out of the classroom and trained in school time. So what did I find? Let's start with free training. Let's face it, the big three companies in EdTech are Apple, Google and Microsoft. So what do they offer? Apple Teacher is a free professional learning program designed to support and celebrate educators using Apple products for teaching and learning. As an educator, you can build skills on iPad and Mac that directly apply to activities with your students. Earn recognition for new things you learn and be rewarded for the great work you do every day. Sign into the program and work your way through the badges to get your Apple Teacher certificate. Google for Education offer a free training for educators. Courses range from beginner to advanced and there's also lots of courses on getting the most out of devices such of Chromebooks. They also have a certified program consisting of educator level one and level two. All resources are free, but if you want certification, it's done through a paid exam. You can also go on to be a certified trainer, innovator, and coach. Microsoft Educator Center offers hundreds of free online self-paced courses for educators. All have a certificate attached and a badge that can be shared. There is also a dedicated educator pathway to become an innovative educator, trainer, and expert. All of these are free. If you want to fine tune a particular skill, there's loads of free training providers out there too. For example, Coursera is an online self-paced course platform that offers free training. If you want a certificate, you'll need to pay, but lots of courses are free. And if you don't need proof of completion, go for it. Finally, there's lots of different hubs out there to provide bursary funded CPD for schools, computing, maths, English and MFL to name a few. A great way to find out what's on offer is to contact your local teaching school hub as they will know what is available in your area. As always, don't forget to check out the TT Radio 2022 Twitter feed. Tell us what you want to know about tech. I'm Steve Woods and that was Two Minute Tech. Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods, your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there, everyone. Um, so we are back, uh, and I am absolutely divided. Uh, de- um, there, there I go, so inventing words again. I'm absolutely delighted um, to welcome our, our next guest. Um, well, f- I've been, I've known about him for maybe almost a decade. Um, yet today's the first time I've ever spoken to him. Um, so it is the legendary uh, Fluency MC. You may have seen, heard, um, certainly you've, you will have listened to him um, across social media. Um, but I remember him as the original ELT YouTube sensation from, I think it was back in maybe 2013-ish when there was an irregular verbs rap that came out. And I remember seeing it and just thinking, oh my God, this is how we need to be teaching. Like, just, that's it. That's the way, like, if you're gonna, if you if you need to learn irregular verbs, then that's the way to do it. So we do have Fluency MC here. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, hey, Harry, thank you. Renewable English, wow. Like I was saying before we, we got on, I can't believe it's taken this long for us to connect. Um, uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here and I'm, I'm excited to talk to you man. I, I, I'm, I really like the, the work you're, you've been doing. And like I said, I don't know why we haven't connected, but hey, it doesn't matter. Here we are, let's go. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, wow, the original ELT YouTube sensation. I like that, man. I, I, there may be an acronym in there somewhere after have to, have to take a look at that. It's definitely true though. Like, I'm trying to think of like ELT, like YouTube videos that went viral <laughs> prior to that. And I, I genuinely uh. can't think of any. Now, I've been in, in ELT since, you know, YouTube started. Uh, and I can't I can't think of another one that, that jumped out like that one. And, you know, and I don't know many other teachers that have got over 3 million views <laughs> on one video on YouTube. I'll be honest. I don't know many. It's funny because I think when you say 3 million, you're probably referring to the video on YouTube that has the most views of my uh song but it's not my my channel 
it's somebody else. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, it's a long story, which we could get into, but there are more important things we can talk about. But um, uh, suffice it to say that across social media, it has more than 60 million views. Uh, but very few of those views are actually my own. But I'm not <laughs> mad at that because what that means is, you know, people figured out that that's the way that they can help uh, remember regular verbs. And that was the the whole point in the first place when I created it, I wrote the song and made the video for my students in the first place. So it's, it's a great thing. I'm very, I'm very happy about it. It is. Uh, and that's one of the funny things about kind of, you know, YouTube and, and, and going viral as it were, it it's, you can't really see it in one video. So like I say, you know, there's 3 million, 3.3 million on the original video, but yeah, as you say, it's, it's spread but it's not the original video. Everywhere. That's what I'm saying, man. That's, that's not, not the original. original. Video. No, no, there's somebody else who, who uploaded my video. But ah. that's because that's because my what, my YouTube channel got hacked at one point. I had four million views on the video. My it got deleted from my channel. Like I said, it's it's a long story. Oh, no. But uh, and, and the, the irony is at that at that time I was considering con contacting the person that had the video that's up now. To yeah. say, hey, thanks. I really appreciate the love, but you know, um, you know, <laughs> you're you're taking views away from my video, my channel. Thank God I didn't do that because it wasn't long after that when I lost the video. So yeah, if you look at that video, uh, it's not it's not me. <laughs> I mean, it's not my channel. But in the at the end of the day, man, it's 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 honestly, man, two things. It's about you know obviously the resource being out there, uh, and and secondly. Uh, you know, if the fact that that person has that out there and other people have uploaded it has helped me to get more work. It's helped me to, you know, do a lot more to help other students and teachers. So. Yeah. So I always like to ask people, I like to ask my guests, what is your, your journey in ELT? Mm. You know, so how did you get from, I don't know, not being an English language teacher to becoming <laughs> the most famous rapping ELT teacher there is out there? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's I, I, I love that question, too. I ask that question when I have guests on, on things that I do, too. I, it's, it's the best question. Um, for me, it was I, you know, in I guess when I was getting my bachelor's, like in university, undergraduate program in the States, in New York, you know, I was I was really getting interested in in psychology and education, uh, especially like adolescence and high school identity development cognitive psychology, how they learned, how they interacted with people, social psychology. So I was, you know, kind of going back and forth. Should I, you know, go into a doctoral program to do research and teach in psychology? Should I go out into a public school and teach? Because, you know, I'd grown up in uh, public school systems that were not so great. So I thought I, I kind of felt like I had a, uh, you know, I, I could be a good teacher in a in a in an urban public school. Uh, because I had, you know, the kind of the privilege of going to a, a great university and learning all this great theory and stuff, but the kind of hands-on experience or what, not hands-on is the wrong word, but that I could develop the hands-on experience because I'd, I'd gone to schools like that anyway. Uh, but at the same time I was a DJ and I was, you know, uh, uh, doing radio shows, parties, uh, hip hop DJ. I was, I was really passionate about the music, the culture. And I thought, hey, maybe I want to you know, go to the music business, you know, do stuff with hip hop. So I was I was really caught. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I, I ended up uh, getting accepted to my first choice of a doctoral program, starting a PhD program and uh, which was a five year program and leaving after like six weeks <laughs> because it was it just overwhelmed me. And I felt like I got a DJ. I got to do something with music. And luckily, um, you know, long story short, like a year later, after like, you know, major existential crisis and uh, a lot of other terrible things happened. But um, I had the, the the good fortune to to sub a class for my cousin who was teaching English, uh, ESL to immigrants, mainly illegal immigrants from Central South America in Brooklyn in Sunset Park, right near the station that I had that issue the other day, by the way, at 34th Street in Sunset Park. Um, but yeah, um, and I just fell in love immediately 
with the whole, you know, the whole nine yards of, <laughs> of English language teaching to, you know, uh, students who were, you know, working all night in factories <laughs> trying to, but they want to learn English to get ahead. And they came from all these like diverse like cultures in Central and South America. It was amazing. So yeah, and then I already had like this interest, as I said before, in in sort of identity development, cognitive psychology, how do people learn, how do people interact? And I, I realized, whoa, like this is just the perfect place for me, you know, in ELT. Um, so I, I, I got the, I got the CELTA. I did a master's at City University of New York. Um, started teaching, got into curriculum development, started my own school uh, with a with a former student of mine who's Japanese, and we had a school, for TOEFL, TOEFL school for Japanese students in Manhattan. Um, did a lot of different things, and then somewhere like sort of midway, because uh, I've been teaching now for like twenty two years, <laughs> uh, twenty three years. Somewhere midway, like after I'd already been using music as most teachers do, especially language teachers. Uh, I, I had the idea to to write a song, and it turns out that first song I wrote was the Irregular Verbs rap I wrote, Stick Stuck Stuck, uh, which is still the most popular, but I've written, you know, uh, almost 200 more songs, but uh, I put out a lot of those songs, and some of them I haven't. But the, the reason for doing it was not that I want to rap in the classroom, and this is a common misconception about what I do. And it's interesting what you said, like that's when you introduced me, you're like, oh, you know, that's how we should teach. And then whether you was conscious or not, you kind of backed up, you know, it, it, that's how people need to learn irregular verbs. Like, should we be teaching using rap? Like, I don't, it's not like some people think like I come in the classroom and do like a rap musical, like my lesson is all rap and everybody's <laughs> rapping, but it's not that at all. I mean, what it was, the whole point from the beginning, the re, what, what, what inspired me in the first place was that my students in New York who had come from different countries, often with this idea that, okay, I'm just going to be in New York and all of a sudden I'm going to acquire English. Yet they're, they're coming to New York with a, a very weak foundation of grammar and vocabulary, going out and figuring out quickly that they can't understand <laughs> what people are saying and it was like oh you know uh what am i going to do because they have this great opportunity if they had that foundation to be able in the classroom to express their opinions you know it's all this great functional english agree and disagree about things and you know talk about themselves and everything else how are they going to do that this communicative way of of, 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 uh, of of using English in the classroom if they don't have like, you know, the basics, that, that, that base, that base. So, you know, that base was not going to come from, you know, memorizing things or from studying grammar. I realized being a musician, I played drums too, a DJ. I mean, I was always into music. It's like, wait, music helps us remember. So wait a second, hip hop has this rhythm that is like the rhythm of English. I'm a hip hop DJ. I'm teaching in New York. Hip hop started in New York. My students are curious about hip hop. Moreover, you know, hip hop is universal for my students. I've got Korean students who know about Korean rap. I've got, you know, Mexican students who know about Mexican rap. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, you know it's, 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 it's something that like, I should be, you know, I should, I should, I should start writing songs. So, so that's, that's how, that's how it began, man. It was, it, and it's to this day about that. And, and there's still this misconception. Like, you know, as I think, you know, I go and do shows in schools. Teachers will be like, oh, my students say that they want me to do what you do in the classroom. I'm like, but I don't do that in the classroom. This is about out of class practice. This is about, you know, instead of repeating some, you know, inane conversation from a textbook, like in the old days, it's about getting repetitive exposure to grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation through songs because it's more interesting, more fun. Plus we remember more with rhythm and rhyme, you know, getting maybe into maybe where we're going about rap and ELT, you know, but just to make sure that's clear from, from the jump, this is, this is not about, you know, when I do teacher training, uh, you know, we get into this right away. I'm like, they, what, what do I do in the classroom? I do, you know, communicative activities, let's dialogues, like, you know, let's, let's, get into this article from this magazine, this video. It's it's not about rap, but if students, you know, don't have, as I said before, and it's the most, you know, that foundation, if the target language is not up here for the activity and they're translating, they're checking the book, they're looking on the board for that target language, they won't succeed. 
for me, that's like one one of the the things here in Spain now. I'm when I teach, I'm not a huge like grammar basher, you know. But here in Spain, mm. if you're going to get through any of your exams, if you're going to get through school, you need to know mm. all of the grammar. And something that really irritates me is. Now, I don't know if this is how I came across um, the song in the first place. Something that really irritates me is here from the age of about six to 18, every single year they have irregular verbs exams every mm. single year. And it's just it's rote learning. It's sit mm. down, open your book. You've got your three examples in there and you've got the translation and that's it. And that's what they do year after year. And when I saw that song, I was just like, <laughs> this is going to be way more useful because yeah. it it's catchy you know it, it's there it's something that you can you can kind of connect to it's something you can really mm. you, you don't just sit there and, and do that and it's it's a bit like you know i know people now you know, like adult english speaking people that when you ask them a letter what they do is they sing through the alphabet song in their head to see where it comes in the alphabet you know they kind of sit there and you can see them <laughs> right. singing a bit like because it sticks, you know, and you mentioned that it, it, with, with all music, but, you know, I've, when I was learning Spanish, there are songs I can still remember that I try mm. to remember irregular verbs with. Of course. Um, but also, like, for my for one of my best friend's weddings back in 2011, like, we um, were huge fans of um, the Alphabet Aerobics by, by Black Alicious. Mm. Uh, so I rewrote that for his... For the best man song, and that was you know a long time ago now. That was you know 11, 12 years ago. It's not gone though. I can still yeah. remember it, and I know for right. a fact I'll be able to remember it for a very long time. And that kind of inspired me as well to to ask students to go out and find some more kind of maybe more old school style hip hop, not as much mm. you know as. Although, you know, I've got no problem with, with grime and, and hip hop nowadays. <laughs> but I think, you know, um, more old school. And, you know, I tried to get them more into like Jurassic 5. And, you oh, know, yeah. And, and, oh, you, yeah. And, and just a bit back, because I, f- I think they maybe find that easier to to understand in the first place, like the lower level students. Mm. So I think yeah. my next question is what, you know, you said you were into hip hop back in, in, you know, in your early days. Um, what were the first acts that really spoke to you? <laughs> I mean, the first, first acts, I mean, it was Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, 1982. I mean, I gotta tell you, my first hip hop memory was being in sixth grade at sixth grade camp, uh, where we went like for a week into the woods, you know, from the city into the woods. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, before that, I was already like into disco and like, a, my little turntable and stuff like this was when I was like 11 years old. So in 82, tw- I was 12 years old, you know, I'm already into kind of into disco, but it's getting kind of old. I didn't know anything about rap. Um, and I uh, went to this camp uh, with my school and the high school camp counselors uh, were, were into hip hop. And they, anyway, the counselor we had was like, okay, we're going to go to the cafeteria from the cabin. And what we're going to do walking to lunch is you're going to go like this on your legs, like boom, 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 pop, boom, boom, ah, boom, 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 pop, boom, boom. And you're going to say, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're here, like that. Just repeat that. I didn't know what was going on. So we're walking down <laughs> to, to the cafeteria doing that. And I was like feeling this thing. And then... That night, they're playing the song. It's Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five who, for the uh, the song. It's nasty, and it's funny because you put the message. When I saw the message on on the on the little promo for from Renewable English for the podcast, I was like, "Oh wow!" So yeah, so so it was just after the message in New York. New York came out, then it's nasty came out, and it's nasty samples the Tom Tom Club, um, and you know I I know I didn't know anything about any either of those groups, you know. But like when I, when I was doing it, I heard that night when they're like, you know, uh, you know, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. I was like, wow, we did that. And I was like, I have this infectious rhythm and this music. I was like, whoa. So after that, it was just like, it was all, I mean, I went, I was, you know, I went to a middle school 
in, in St. Louis, Missouri, that was mostly black American. Like the culture was shifting at that point from like, you know, like uh, kind of uh, disco into hip hop. And it was just like, all of a sudden it was everywhere, man. So it was, you know, it was Run DMC. So, you know, 82, when I heard that, it's like 82 was when Sucker MCs, it's like that, the first Run DMC uh, single drop. And that changed everything, you know, the whole sound change, you know, the whole Rick Rubin uh, sound came in uh, after that, you know what I mean? So it was just like, yeah, so Run DMC. I went to the Fresh Festival 85 in St. Louis, you know, it was Houdini, uh, Run DMC, Fat Boys, uh, Nucleus, uh, who else was there, Dougie Fresh, you know, so that was, from that point on, man, I was, yeah, I was hooked. My, my, I've got an older brother. He's what four years older than me. Um, not a huge difference, but yeah, he was he was big into hip hop when I was, you know, I was seven or eight maybe. He was, you know, eleven, twelve, and he was he was just getting into hip hop. And it was, you know, Run DMC at the time. Um, mm. And you know, that, that stuff just it's timeless. It's absolutely timeless. <laughs> I, I was is. really lucky that for my for my sixteenth birthday, he actually took me to see them you know it was, it was wow it was not long before um you know jason meisel's well we all know what happened um, yeah. we don't need to we don't need to uh, dwell on that too much but yeah it was just that kind of moment so of, they were of, together you saw them you saw them before uh jay passed wow exactly exactly it was and it, it was it must have been maybe a year before um wow. maybe maybe two but yeah it was that moment of, of going to see them and, you know, I was there with my brother and it was just something so incredible. You know, there, there are other amazing um, hip hop acts, but for me, Run DMC will always be mm. like my, my, my number one. They're, they're the, you know, when, when I go to YouTube to listen to something, if, you know, I'm in the middle of Spotify <laughs> to listen to something, if I don't know what to listen to, depending on my mood, it's either Run DMC or Foo Fighters. Like, they're the... Ooh, you know, yeah. they're, they're very in, in, in their respective genre, genres, though, I get it. I get exactly. It, it makes exactly. sense. <laughs> yeah, so like, I had that. And then, yeah, my brother was also, you know, he was into NWA as well, yeah. um, which for me at the time was just like, this is loads of bad words. This is sort of kind of fun. <laughs> it was but, just, yeah. yeah. And I just flipped out with that. And then like a bit later, like Jurassic five came along and just mm. absolutely blew my mind. Like, and, mm. and that is when, when, as I mentioned before, when students ask me like, you know, what should I do? What sort of music should I listen to? You know, I'm mm. into this, I'm into this. And it's just like, I always suggest checking out Jurassic five because it's just mm -hmm. so like, mellow and chill mm, and just, mm, it's mm. one of those things you can kind of sit back to and just you can do you can go about your daily routine and just just chill with with True, your I agree. totally agree but you know what it is what it's all about like going back to what you said earlier about like you know suggesting you know uh people like tap into some kind of old school hip-hop because it's timeless but you have nothing against the new music i mean I, I, that sounds like me too but you know, what it comes down to when I talk about like the three R's, relax, repeat, remember, like that's why we remember, you know, commercials on TV. You know, that's that's how, you know, Nike and Coca-Cola get to us. You know, we're not trying to remember it. So paradoxically, because we're just like chilling, right? <laughs> we just acquire the messages. It's the same with music. If you like the music, you know, if you don't like it, you don't listen, you don't repeat it. There's no repetition. If, 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 if you also, if you don't like it, you're not relaxed, right? But if you have that combination of, of, of feeling good about it and just naturally wanting to listen again, listen again, as opposed to a corporation that's just trying to tell you, you know, you have no choice to listen again and again. When, when you're like wanting to listen to the song, all of a sudden motivation comes in. It's what I call meaningful repetition, right? That could be anything. So like what I, what I figured out is like, so if somebody's like, okay, I love, you know, trap or drill um, music. You know what I mean? I'm like, the, the only issue I have with that, because if they want to listen to that like 20,000 times, that's great. If what they're getting from a second language acquisition perspective is what they need to get and want to get. Mm -hmm. You're to succeed in the classroom on a test, at the supermarket, <laughs> at a job interview. Okay. So so that's was always the issue for me. It's like, you know, I, you know, there I was you know, back in 2000, you said 2003, it's actually 2007 when I wrote that first song. And by, by 2011, when I put the video out, 
I already had like 20 songs my students were listening to on CD. You know, it was before new oh, media. Wow. This is yeah. before, I mean, the whole, when I, when I did Stick Stuck Stuff video in the classroom, it was because students were like, you gotta do this, YouTube's coming, you know, you gotta, you gotta get on this YouTube thing. I didn't know what was going on. You know what I mean? We'd, we'd already been using it. The whole idea was at home, you listen to my songs, if you, you know, you like them. And, and you know, I, I tailored them to what my students seem to like most. You know, these are students in New York City and New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. Then it was, you know, the whole point, like I said, it was like sort of this flip classroom model instead of watching like the lectures or, or getting the grammar at home to come in and, and communicate in the classroom. It was, you're getting the repetition with the music so that you remember those structures, you remember those, that target language, you come in, oh, sh it's ready to go, you know, and it's music that helps you do that. So that, that was all happening for four years with CD. Uh, and it was just about my students. So when the video came out at first, it was like, oh, cool, I can share this with the world. And people loved it right away. I mean, I was really lucky, you know, it, it really took off, as you said, it became viral. But what the best part about that was, that it was like, oh, we, it doesn't have to be CDs anymore. A kid or an adult anywhere can repeat this thing. <laughs> you know, not only do they have to buy a CD, you have to send them some some physical thing, but like they can just press repeat. I mean, you think about like, you know, rewinding tapes, you know what I mean? So it's like the whole point is like, it's relax, repeat, remember. The more times you listen, if you enjoy it, the more, the more likely you're going to remember it's going to stick in your head. And, uh, you know, so I, so I get what you're saying definitely about the old school thing, because as you know, like my vibe, like the beats I use, what I do, whether I produce them or I, uh, most of the stuff I make myself, but I got friends and I go, whatever, I, I use different music, but, you know, because I'm, I, I like different kinds of rap, but like the thing about old school is definitely universal. I said earlier, hip hop's universal. What not all of it is, but definitely <laughs> that the roots of it are like, you know, some people, oh, I never knew I liked rap until I listened to fluency. <laughs> you know, it happens all the time. It's like, you know what I mean? Like you put Jurassic five to someone like you said, you know, like this, this oh, I didn't know I liked rap, you know? So there's something definitely universal about like the old school uh, feeling of hip hop for sure, but just, Last thing, back to like, you know, if a student says, well, I don't like that, I like drill or I like rock, or I like, then, then you know, let's find something <laughs> for you, right? That you can, but you know, uh, whatever it is, and, and it doesn't have to be music either. You want to repeat this game in English, this video, this meme, these jokes, this, you know, whatever it is that is going to make you press, you know, play again. That's what it's all about, because we all know how many times it takes to remember a vocabulary word. We know it's not about studying and memorization. We know it's about, you know, natural exposure, repetition in a meaningful way. That's that's nothing new. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. It's, you know, it, it doesn't work to just sit there and look at it in the book over and over again. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's never going to work like that. And, mm. and like you say, music does just, it just, it kind of helps it stick. Now, I want to ask you, you're in Paris now. Well, yeah. You're in France. You're in Paris now. Yeah. You are in Paris. Yeah. Okay. Right out here. Yeah. There you go. Um, how did you get to Paris? How did you end up there? So, you know, you're, you're in New York. You're in the, you know, you're, you're in the middle of the hip hop <laughs> scene. You, you've opened your school and you're not there anymore. You're in Paris now. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one. That's, that's because when, when I put the YouTube video out and it, and it caught on so quickly, um, the next thing that happened is that I was getting messages on YouTube because I wasn't on Facebook yet saying, hey, you know, uh, it actually came from a student uh, teacher. I call her a student because we, we work together as a, uh, uh, Ikram. Uh, but a student a teacher who said, you know, I, I have this teacher's group on Facebook and we're all watching. I pasted your video from YouTube. We're all watching. This is this is 2010. And I'm like, Facebook. I'd heard of that, but isn't that some kind of like college social like network thing kind of, you know? Um, so she's like, oh, well, I have this group and it's all about like, you know, English language learning and, and how we can, you know, be better teachers. And I'm like, wow, because at that point, 2010, I'd already been like doing teacher training for like six years, but I've been doing it like, you know, in the physical classroom. Mm -hmm. I had no idea understanding about how this could work online and especially with social media because that's the thing it was like okay online you know internet wasn't new 
but the whole notion of like people gathering around and and learning in this way, I'm like, oh my god! So I went to Facebook, and it was just, I mean, I'll never forget that moment. That moment and the moment I was in an online classroom live with people, you know, those, those are two moments. The Facebook one was even more in, in, impressionable because it was like teachers gathering. Like now we take it for granted. And now there's a lot of like ill stuff going on with Facebook and social media. So we're kind of retreating into our own servers and our own spaces. But at the time it was like, oh my God, teachers, teachers we like this about Fluent CMC and this, but we don't need this. We need that. He should change this. Wow, he should come to Morocco. You know, I'm seeing this stuff. And so then anyway, I was like, well, I'd love to come to Morocco. So then all of a sudden I'm on Facebook, you know. And ever since then, my experience with Facebook, I'm really lucky, has been very professional. I say lucky because I, I despise the whole like kind of like going onto Facebook and like sort of in fear of who you're going to see and talk to your personal. It's been very much of uh, English language teaching and learning uh, experience for me from the from the get go, so yeah, I, I, these teachers were like, "You should come to Rabat, you know, uh, or you should come to Marrakesh, or you should come to Agadir." I was like, "What should I do?" So I uh, we we together wrote to the embassy in Rabat. Uh, the luckily the the Rilo, the regional English language officer there, was like, "We got to bring him over." They brought me over. Uh, I went I went to Tunisia after that. Then it was Spain. I sort of worked my way into Southern Europe. It's a, the video was helping me. My travels were helping me. And um, then it was kind of like, wait, I'm, I'm flying from New York <laughs> all the way over here. That's one thing. Uh, my wife is from Paris originally. We met in Brooklyn. Uh, but, you know, we'd always visited her family and stuff in France. So it was kind of obvious if we we're going to move into you know that part of the world because there was work for me, you know the kind of work that there wasn't for me in the states. I mean, I could keep mm -hmm. teaching, I could keep writing, I was doing materials development, but I could always write, do that anywhere. But I could do shows, I could do teacher training sessions live in in North Africa and Europe. Uh, so we decided to move to Paris. Also, our kids are bilingual, so we you know thought this is a good time for us to move. So yeah. Long answer to your question, but that, you that's go. why I'm, that's why I'm in Paris, France. <laughs> um, and how's your French? It's okay. Do you speak French? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I am, I am, however, coming to Paris. Um, okay, cool. We I'll have to be hook in up. Paris on the but... on the twenty on the twentieth and twenty first of May. Oh man, we have to. I'm just, I'm checking my my book. I'll right be, now. Uh, I'm going Make to. Sure. I'm going to be at a climate summit on the uh, 20th and 21st. And we so. got to talk about climate, man, because I told you, I got climate, I got a climate rap, man. I swear to God, it's it's the best thing you've ever, ever, ever heard. I'm going to brag about it like that, because just because I want to make sure that I got your attention and you hear you it. You got my I, attention. You got my attention. <laughs> but, 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 but listen, man, so, but hablas muy bien español. No? Bueno, habla bien, bastante bien. Ah, sí. Lle llevo aquí acento, a acento perfecto. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like you speak Spanish <laughs> as well yeah. then? No, nah, a little bit, not very much. But yeah, man, no, we definitely have to hook up. But um, yeah, I mean, the thing is just just one thing to connect. If you have another question, I'm, I'm ready for it. But when you said, you know, something about music, it's like we've talked about, okay, when you're relaxed and you enjoy something and you repeat it uh, without trying to study it or think about it even, like like messages from corporations, you know, I feel like that's sort of like there's the, that's the evil side of the relax, repeat, remember, you know, like you look at it like the, the imperial forces of like the dark side or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the happy side of that is like, you know, not the advertising side, but the music side of of it and, and and what's what's interesting though is that it's not just about repeating things uh without trying to learn them and being relaxed that's a big part of it but the, the other r so i talk about relax repeat remember but there are two other r's there's rhythm and rhyme and rhythm and rhyme is what makes the big difference and that's why you know jingles you know, uh, which we don't even think about. We remember from like cereal commercials or oh, car commercials or so whatever. 
double yeah, gazing I mean, commercials. That's what I get. <laughs> window. I can still remember them from my youth. From they like thirty me. years ago, and you don't have yeah. to. You don't. You don't have to listen to them again. You just someone mentions the brand, and it's. But it's the same with like you know a Beatles song or whatever equivalent is for for whoever out there with whatever music you know. So it's like, and for me, hip hop, but also the Beatles. So that's I got. I got both. But you know that's why it's 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 about what is it in music that you want to repeat but then back to you know the joke i always have when i do shows with kids i'm like i had this idea you know hip-hop to learn uh to remember english you know you understand my idea yeah i said but i have a problem with my idea oh yeah what's the problem well i said do you know Nicki minaj <laughs> they're like yeah and they start laughing i think they're laughing just whatever reasons about Nicki Minaj. Maybe a couple people already made the connection, but most of them probably have. I'm like, you know, is Nicki Minaj the best English teacher for you? <laughs> it's like, yo, I love hip hop. I grew up with hip hop, Nicki Minaj, great, whatever. I love rap English, but rap English is not the same English. I mean, I already sort of said this earlier, right? It's not, it's not the English for the supermarket, <laughs> the test, the job interview, you know? So it's special, it's special for the culture. It's like, you know, Spanish rap, French rap, you know, anywhere it's, it's, it's special, right? It's special for the culture. So that's why I decided, whoa, if I write the raps and I choose the vocabulary, I choose the grammar structures, I choose the pronunciation, all of a sudden, right, I'm giving my students this practice, this repeated exposure to the target language that they can then get in their heads, come to class and succeed in the classroom and beyond. I can't hear you now, man. Can you hear me? Somehow I... I can't hear you. Ooh, ooh. Not sure what. I'm going on Zoom. Just like, I can't hear you, man. Don't know what it is. Hmm. You can hear me? I, I can hear you perfectly. The, the listeners can't hear you. Maybe it's my headphones. <laughs> no? One second. I'm not sure what's going on. Everything seems okay here. They, they can hear you. They yeah. Can hear you, they can't hear me. But I can't hear you. It's the strangest thing. I can hear you now because. Hmm. Maybe I'll leave and come back in. Hello, hello, check one, check two. Microphone check. Hello, hello. 
I wonder why I can't hear you. Super strange. All right. It's, it's only in pod bay that you can't hear me, right? I'm going to have to go off. Let me go off the, the headphones. Maybe it's a problem with my headphones. Okay. Um, Jason, you sound perfect, apparently. It's me that's the issue. Okay, but I can hear you through our other means here. <laughs> Maybe I don't know why that is, man. Well, tell me, should we um, con should we continue like this, or should I do something else? Let me know. Let's. Uh, well, is it is it double? Is there a lot of feedback for everyone now? When I speak, I'm probably can't even hear me. Um, I'm going to try and unplug. Give me one moment. Oh, I've got an idea. Hello, hello. Mike is good, Peter said. Mike is good, Peter said. Oh, now, but now I hear myself. There's a delay. Don't worry, I've got this covered. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Oh, nice reverb. Oh, nice reverb. Okay, how about now? <laughs> okay, how about now? Hello, hello. Hello there. Can can everybody oh, hear? Now you're in my headphones. There you go. I made it. I'm back. <laughs> He's back. We weren't sure who was who had left, who was Ooh. still there. Well, I, there right. was. There's obviously some kind of issue with the host account, so I've just called right. in on my own personal account. Hey, that was a fun few minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's usually it's usually me. I'm so glad it's somebody else. <laughs> it, it was me this time. It was me. So I've called in on my own personal account. But um, but, but listen, where where were we? Because I felt like we were reaching kind of like this, like kind of. I think Peter. I think the problem was um, Podbean was listening, and I said you've created your own genre, and then it just, ah. everything disappeared. Like I, I, I've announced that there's this whole new genre. And Podbean's was, like, no, it was get out much, of here. It's too much bandwidth for people. They're not ready for it. They're not ready. Exactly. For it. Exactly. So yeah, you've um, you've invented a new genre, pretty much. And also, I, I wanted to just go back to um, what Pete mentioned. Uh, so we've got here, he said in the chat, got one of my team groups doing your verb forms rap the other week. Normally quite a passive group, all got involved and loving the chant. Great to see oh, here. Cheers. So, so cool. That's Very from cool. Uh, Pete Clements, who is Shout out to Pete Clements, another man. ELT man, legend, legend, obviously. Wow, beautiful. Um, Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I, I mean, it's great to hear that. Man. I, need, I need that support. And, and what I really loved as well, well I, I was watching through a lot of your videos the other day, um, I love your Capitals one. I'm a huge fan of Capital <laughs> Cities. I absolutely love Capital Cities. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, another Capitals fan. This is like a dream come true. Um, <laughs> oh, so here we go. Um, Sylvina said, Jason, uh, you said you have a rap about sustainability. Will we hear it today? Well, I mean, look, if you want me to rap, man, I mean, all you got to do is ask. I'll just, I'll just, Mate, you know, I can I just want you to rap. That. I really want you to so, rap. So, okay. So let, let me do, let me do a little bit of the Irregular Verb song live. Just a tiny bit. I'll do a little bit of a, a few things. How about we do that? Uh, so yeah, so so the regular verb song goes like this: The microphone I take took taken is shake shook shaken. Wake walk walk into the style I'm creating. Think thought thought seek sought sought. Listen to the lesson that I teach talk talk. Don't sleep slept slept. I creep crept crept. I sneak snuck snuck up. You leap let let. I keep kept kept. Having fun, I never beat, beat, beaten. I win, one, one. Do, did, done. Begin, begin, begun. Shoot, shot, shot. No, I don't own a gun. I lead, led, led, so I can feed, fed, fed. The knowledge you need straight to your head. When I bring, brought, brought it. You catch, caught, caught it. Sit back, relax. Don't fight, fought, fought it. So that's the original stick, stock, stock. But more recently, and it took me, Harry, it took me, because when I when I wrote the original song, and especially that was 2007, but mm -hmm. especially in uh, after the video came out 2010 and, and and caught on, and people were like, "Oh, you should write a part two. You didn't use all the irregular verbs." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah," and I thought the second one would come easily. It took me like ten years to write the second <laughs> one. And when I say the first one, I wrote in like a day. Yeah, and, and the second one took me ten years because I realized that I kind of like cherry picked the best verbs 
high frequency verbs, but that also could be easily worked into rhymes in a song that connected. Uh, like, here I am now with a list, not of like, uh, you know, uncommon irregular verbs, because those aren't going to be in the song in the first place. That's sort of the point, right? The, the, it's not, we're not going to just bring in like, you know, weave wove woven is not going to be in my song you know just weave uh, them in there somehow. <laughs> you could but it's like it's all about the frequency i'm a big corpus linguistics guy i'm thinking about you know what are the most common collocations we got to get those verbs in into the song but i realized i had like so many that were not uh in the in the original song like big ones so i have to make another song anyway it took a really long time uh and what what the result was a song that is much more cerebral, many more phrasal verbs, deeper messages, which I'm happy about, but it took a longer time. So it starts off very similarly. It's like, I'm back once again to strike, struck, struck, listen up, it's part two of stick, stuck, stuck. People say, said, said, when they read, 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 and listen to the lyrics, they stay in their heads. But if you listen to that new song, relatively new, it gets into like, it gets pretty crazy. So there's that. Uh, as far as like the the environmental song uh, we we're talking about, it's it, it's interesting because uh, the song which is called Solid Again, and which definitely we got to talk about now uh, because of Renewable English and because I really like to work with you on this song. I have a bunch of ideas. This song um, I did for an album with thirteen other songs for Universal music, believe it or not, but it's mm -hmm. it's not uh, uh, for retail. It's for what they call in France synchro. So it's for like, you know, Netflix or commercials or background music, licensing stuff. Uh, but we did a whole album, uh, me with er Eric Milia, shout out to Eric, uh, with a group called Shoot the Gift. That's the name of the group. Uh, that's an expression if you're into hip hop culture, which means like express your talent. You know, shoot the gifts, you know, show, show them what you got. Um, so, yeah, I wrote this song. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was Eric's idea to do a song about the environment that wasn't really, you know, didactic, that wasn't, like, in your face, that wasn't, like, you know, telling people what they had to do. It was more like a, a metaphor, and, mm -hmm. and and it's funny because like I'm I'm <laughs> unfortunately I'm I'm spoiling it by telling you about it because the whole point of the song is while you're listening, it's not until the last line that you figure out it's about climate change. <laughs> like uh -huh. while you're listen while you're listening, uh, it's a metaphor. So it, I, I'm gonna kind of flip it here for you guys. Um, it's it's not gonna be bad that it's like that, but just while you listen to it. Knowing the metaphor, you will know, you'll figure out the vocabulary, you'll figure out the metaphor, you know, in, in two seconds. Imagine if you played it for someone, which I hope you will in the future, I and, they did, will. And, they, and they didn't know what it was about. And would that last line be like, oh, shit, you were talking about something. And then now I realize you're talking about the planet. So I'm going to do an acapella for you guys. Check it out. It's like, it so like it's a bit like "Don't Look Up," but a rap version. And and this was two or three years ago, so yeah, way before that, man. Way before that, exactly. You're yeah. ahead of the curve, man. Ahead of the curve. <laughs> so it goes like this, right? It starts out with a little like like I'm talking to the audience. I met her when I was just a boy. We've been together forever. Well, actually, that's not true. You see, I did her harm. I caused her great pain, and she went away. I don't know where exactly but I know I have to find her and get her back. Heading north, outward bound, steering the course to solid ground. Gotta carry my weight, can't await my fate. Life's melting ice, so love don't forsake. Once long ago, we were deeply connected. Her space I respected, her well-being I protected. You know, I literally worshipped her. That became so self-absorbed, I no longer supported her. Stability threatened, things got toxic, balance disrupted, borderline catastrophic. So opportunistic, I exploited her wealth. She sacrificed her health, depleted her resources. So narcissistic, satisfy my needs, feed my greed. My view of our future so simplistic. The damage, I refuse to do the work to fix it. And the chorus goes, I'll try to be a better, it's a sung chorus. I'll try to be a better human to make our life, sorry, to make our love solid again. I'll try to be a better human to make our love solid again. 
My actions got her heated. It wore her down. The more she was mistreated, the more she retreated. Her life, she didn't need me around to complete it. She was bound to leave me too conceited to see it. But I've evolved and can counter our problems, face them head on, do everything to solve them. No longer in denial, I hold her in high esteem. Treated with dignity, we'll act as a team. No more draining her of energy to meet my demands. Blatant disregard for her thoughts and her plans. On the strength, I'll give her the respect she deserves. Value or cherish her, defer to her. She might be better off without me, but I can't believe it. Our relationship, I don't have the capacity to grieve it. I'll keep on searching. I hope it's not too late. Pray our love will reflate, not disintegrate. If she won't take me back, I know I won't survive. I need her mind, body, and spirit to stay alive. I'm getting closer. I can feel it. Soon I'll be facing her. My world, planet Earth, there's no replacing it. Mate, that is... Absolutely awesome. Um, send me a recording because I'm going to be singing that myself. I'm going to be <laughs> singing that myself. So. Well, the music, the music makes all the music is sublime, and the music. I didn't have any part of the music for this one. I did some production on some other tracks for the album. The music is. I mean, I'm glad I did acapella, but it would be it would be great to share it with you. Um, uh, with the music too and just this and then it goes back to the chorus i'll try to be a better man to make our love solid again the last little part is heading north to greener lands greener because the ice is melting it's like the irony right yeah. heading north to greener lands shaken faith in myself as a man trust is undermined i can't rewind time life's melting ice as the temperature climbs it's nice that's for you, baby. Look, I'm man, not I just met you. But no, no, no. But when I was when we were when, I, when you contacted me, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, oh my god, I man, why haven't I connected with this this dude and shared this song? But the thing is, this song when we first uh, did it, uh, we caught the World Wildlife uh, Reserv the, the, uh, Society or whatever from France. The chapter they were, let's make a video. Like anytime we've we've shown this to anyone, everybody gets these ideas. Like wow, you know, there's nothing that's sort of you know, it's not hit him in your face, right? In the head uh, about climate. It, it's more of like, right, this metaphor, this thing. Like, again, I, I spilled the beans at the beginning. <laughs> but if you imagine when you listen to it the first time, I've tested it out so many times with students. They're like, oh, it's about, you hear it the first time, you know, and then you, you're like, and you don't hear the last line for advanced students or intermediate students. They hear the last line, but they didn't put it all together. You ask them what it's about. They're trying to get the main idea. Oh, it's about a guy whose woman <laughs> left her. Yeah. He disrespected her. You know? So then like they get the lyrics and it's like, oh, snap, right? And then it's about, okay, what can you find? Oh, depleted her resources. You know, they start to look for you know the oh, language. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, now Sylvine has mentioned this uh, some more ideas for lesson plans, and I would absolutely love to write a lesson plan around hey! that. Hey, but that's what we got to do, man. This and, and the thing is, we had big dreams for this song. We even had like a video production company that was had some investors. They're like, okay, we're gonna go to like you know, uh, I forget the Mont Blanc in in France in the Alps and make a video where like, I'm leaving Paris, I'm the individual man, but then it becomes clear I represent mankind, and we're gonna go to this. We're gonna go there, like we're gonna shoot in 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 the spring when everything's melting, you know. <laughs> like we're gonna yeah. do this whole thing, man. It hasn't happened yet, but like what I know now is it's, it's always back to like grassroots, man. It's back to like you know connecting with people like you doing doing what you're doing. They're like let's get the song out there, man. Let's get yeah, it out. Hundred percent, like it's so good. I, like when you send me a copy, I'm just gonna be sitting yeah. here. I'm gonna be learning it. It's gonna be like ah, yeah. alphabet aerobics. But, but yo, wait till you hear the music. <laughs> telling uh, you Which i'm you so excited it. yeah but 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 back to the back to the uh because i don't know how much time we have here man but i, I gotta say because you mentioned you mentioned the 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 countries and capitals you know like for me like it, it's 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 it, there's a connection between that and climate change uh for me because w w as far as like uh you know building knowledge you know how can music build knowledge to get people to a stage where they're you know, thinking critically, you know, using analytical thinking, you know, using their brains. Uh, and, and, you know, paradoxically, it's about getting that base first. Like we think, oh, Absolutely. it's not about memorization. It's not about who cares if you know the capitals of the countries. Well, you know what? When you know every country's capital, like I do, if you're watching the news, 
and or you're you know reading the paper and you see like Port Morensby, Papua New Guinea, there's some crime problem there. You're gonna go. You're gonna notice it and go to that article. And all yes. of a sudden, you're learning about Papua New Guinea, and that only happened because you've got that collocation, if you will, of the capital and the country. Yeah. You know, Port Morensby, Papua New Guinea. So is it useless trivia? No, not and it's the same same with stuff like climate change. Like if you if you repeat a rap and you get into it and it's like, oh shit, I never really thought about climate change this way. Well, it's not because nobody was telling you to think about it. It's because you didn't have your own connection and reference. And a lot of that's the base of language, man. It's, it's that language. Yeah, um, with with capitals, like you say, it, it's something I've here in Spain. You have to know capital cities if you're going to pass geography. <laughs> it's not something again, you know. Maybe it isn't essential information, but uh, the you know geographical ignorance that's out there—it's incredible. You know the amount of times you you say, yeah. you know, I've had students. You know, I'll talk about Australia, and they'll be like. Where is Australia in England? Wow, like, yeah, but yeah, hey, I, I'm, I'm, isn't I'm, I'm, actually there. <laughs> I'm from the US, man, so I got better stories than anybody <laughs> else about that. Trust yeah. me, a lot of what you see is true when you see those videos. But look, man, look, the, the, the big question, like the big, big question here is like uh, in Spain, and maybe you can answer this or not, but I mean, this is the big question. Kids that like do real learning in order to, to pass those tests, do they do they remember it or do they forget it? And the next question is, if if they remember it, does it motivate them in the way I just explained? Like, does it make them connect with with content in, in life? Does it help them build critical thinking skills because they have that base or do they just reject it because it was so unpleasant? The whole process was so unpleasant and borderline traumatic. Yeah, that, that, exactly, that. That. <laughs> yeah. exactly that. I figured, because yeah, I've... I've, been, I've been in Spain a lot, in Seville in particular. I got to talk to you about that. I've done shows around Spain, so I know, I know, man. It's mainly like, let's just get past, you know, so they don't retain it. It's, it's not something that motivates them. This, it was exactly that. Like one of the, the points I tried to make with my students a few years back. So, you know, they had their Capitals of Europe quiz. You know, they had to learn the 52 capital cities. The day before the exam, I was in there and I was loving it. I was in my element. I was just throwing them out there. They were throwing them back. And I was like, yeah, this is incredible. Then like three weeks later, I was like, hey, guys, yeah. let's do the oh, capitals no. of Europe again. And it was just <laughs> gone. Like It was absolutely gone. Oh, they were like, yeah, we've no. done the exam, though. So we don't oh, need no. to remember. It's like, OK. And then like they come to me and, you know, they're just before they go off to do their pet exam or their, their first certificate exam. And they come to me like two days before and they're like, what do I need to study? And it's like, well, nothing. Mm. You know, two, mm. two days before the exam, I was like, don't study anything, you know, mm. just, you know watch a movie or, or listen yeah. to music, you know, totally. don't study anything because, you know, if you've been in the class, if you've been learning, you're ready for the exam. You know, That's there's it. nothing you can study. And I had one guy come up to me and I used to do idiom of the week. Just, you know, it was a thing every week. We'd learn an idiom, see how it's used, just because it was a bit of fun. And there was one guy that came up to me, like, you know, before the exam and said, uh, Harry, I stayed up all night last night studying the idioms that we'd done so I can put them all in the writing. And I was like, Sergio, that, uh, great. I don't know why you did that, though, because that's not the way to pass your exam. You know, <laughs> there might be two or three idioms you can use. And I've had other students come up to me and be like, yeah, I used 12 of the idioms in my exam. And I was like, nobody writes like <laughs> no. that. Like, who uses 12 idioms in 100 words? Like, come on, man. But they're so indoctrinated with a way of, of an approach to, to how to learn. Exactly, exactly. Like, and, you know, yes, you need to do exam practice. Yes, you need to, you know, get into mm. it. Um, but how and, do you do that practice? I mean, I love these opportunities. I mean, give me students who need to learn those things and, and let's go because there's other ways of doing it. You know, I mean, I, I teach I Cambridge this. exams, I teach TOEIC, you know, it's games, raps, jokes, videos. It's it's not that 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 information should not be retained. It's it's about how are you going to retain it? Exactly. And I, I have this thing. I don't know why I do it, um, but it kind of comes kind of naturally. That, so I'll, I have these uh, Pearson and BBC live classes um, where... You know, we connect with classes around the world. So today, for example, I mm, was in I saw that I was in I was in Algeria and 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 uh, Italy, cool. Poland, and but like when I'm getting into it, 
like I'll be asking the questions and you know we'll be going through the, the vocab and that and I'll just suddenly start doing it to a beat and I've just seen that Vanessa's <laughs> just joined the chat yeah. again. Now Vanessa is um an absolutely she's one of my fellow live class trainers. She's she's a, a great friend. Um and I do storytelling with with her academy at her language school in Rome. Um and we mm. usually do stuff like Julia Donaldson because it's it's four kids. Okay, you know, I know, I know, conflicts. I know about that academy. I know, I know and, what you're talking about. Very and, cool. Okay. So yeah, she, yeah, she's like it's for kids, kind of in Rome, yep. and, and they're absolutely yep. amazing. Yep. So we usually do these, these Julia Donaldson books, which you know they're they're rhyming couplets, and it just comes in, and it's natural to, to have this beat with it, and mm. you know for a few like for a few of them, it just turns into everything I do. It's not just the book; it's like the lead <laughs> yeah. to the book and yeah. coming out of the book, and suddenly I'm just. I just get into this rhythm. I, you, I, I don't know. I find I, it I hope, but I hope you're recording that stuff because, like, as as cool as it is, and we got to motivate learners live for that. There's nothing better than someone like me or you who can you do that. But then it's it, it, it's about like going back to what I say. You know, what inspired me in the first place. Time with the students, you know, is more about communicative activities, right? Can you record that stuff, whether it's audio, it's video? Are they going to listen to it? Are they going to read the lyrics? Are they, you know, because that's where you flip it because there's not enough time, right? I mean, it can be fun. So I introduce songs, you know, we do, you know what I mean? But like, it's, 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 it's mostly about, hey, you know, uh, are you able to retrieve this language that you want to retrieve? And are you retrieving it because either my songs, somebody else's songs, some videos, you know, is it coming? Is it coming? So that's why, man, it's it's about recording that stuff. You got to record. Speaking of couplets, man, later. I I have a toic couplet approach to toic, man. Where did I tell you? I got these, these business English couplets, man. And the reason I was calling them couplets, I love that word, is because it was like, okay, it's not a whole song. Adults learning toic, maybe, or 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 Cambridge, you know, it's now a lingua skill, what you know, bullets, whatever. You know, the business English is like, oh, we don't want to rap or do songs. Okay, what's another way to present rhymes? You know, it could be just like a two-line thing where it has that idiom. It has, you know. Uh, anyway, man, wow, we have a lot to talk about, man. We have a lot yeah, to talk about. Yeah, it's funny, actually. I was, um, I'm, I'm writing a, I'm, right, I'm working on a, an activity book at the moment. Um, Very cool. And at the, at the end of each unit, I'm trying to get something in that's, you know, a bit different. You know, not just the same typical end of unit. So to like surmise all the knowledge they've acquired in each unit, mm. um, I've been. So the the first unit is is haikus, which mm. you know, it's a bit different. But the but unit three, I think it is, I've got into couplets. You know, and nice. I'm trying to get students to write a couplet about what they've learned. You know, so you you know so students cool. are displaying their knowledge and using that because it's not the kind of thing you traditionally see in a textbook. So no. I'm trying to think, let's try and be a bit creative. And it's not exactly rap. No, but, but it's, it's better in a lot of it. ways. But no, no, it's better because it's 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 a smaller task. Like that's the thing. Like the way you get into to rhyming, I feel is not like I have to sit down with a blank page and write a song. I mean, that's that's preposterous. It's more like you know finding this little rhyme, you know, getting you know. So I think couplets, that whole thing. Like then, if if people then can like build on that, or you can help them build and, and make a song, or you can you know take take from their songs, you know, use what they have as fodder and create something that you share with more learners. So I write songs all the time with students this way. We go back and forth. So I I have you know contracts with schools where we're doing songs together, and and the way it works is like you know I get them to send me something. You know, I play with it, send it back. We do a lot of back and forth. Suddenly we've got, you know, I do this a lot with uh, vocational schools, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, professional schools, you know, wrote a rap about like auto mechanics, uh, you know, chefs, baking and <laughs> like vocabulary. Like, you know, I uh, did one with uh, with public works, like, you know, construction work. So, so, yeah, man, there's so much that can be done with rhythm and rhyme. But I can't resist, man, because like, you're a capitals countries guy. Give me, I have, I have a, a, a song called World Journey. If we had time, I can do, if I, you know, I can do the whole world, man. I can do the whole world starting anywhere you want me to start. And going One second, I'm just going to tell my world. dog to stop barking. You got to mute the dog? How do you do that? <laughs> I think he's muting his dog, guys. 
I'm not sure the dog is muted. She, she's, oh, not, beautiful she's not listening to me. She's a beautiful yellow lab. Well, she's, she's, she's got her own ideas. She, she does but, definitely have her own ideas. But she's going to be quiet, <laughs> aren't you? You only need to be quiet for 10 more minutes, okay? Good girl. Muy buena. Good girl. <laughs> When your I'm owner, and, I'm not when your well, when your owner and best friend is a podcaster, and you're allowed, <laughs> you're allowed in the room. You got to follow certain protocol. Listen, yeah, man, because I know we got to go soon. You, you name, and I hope I can come back, man. I mean, listen, I mean, I, I, I would, or, or we do something else. We, we make a video. Already invited back. We make, a, or yeah, or we make, we make a video together. We do whatever. I mean, we got to hook up on on the environmental stuff, on the climate change stuff. Then that's just like no question. But but um, you name you name a continent because I have a song called World Journey, which is actually World Journey is me piecing together these songs I wrote. The first one was was called uh, Big Cities about the U.S. Then the next one was called More of America, which was Central and South America. Next, I did uh, Africa 54, which is the 54 countries in Africa. From there, I did Fluency in Europe. And the last one I did was, um, what did I even call it with Asia? I forget now, because I haven't, I, that video I took, anyway, that got hacked and got, anyway, it wasn't Fluency in Asia, but but give me a, give me a continent, man. Asia includes, well, Asia includes Oceania. So I've got either, okay. either Asia, Oceania, off the top, man, off the top. No, I'm going no. to say I'm going to go with South America. So the Americas. The Americas. There you go. All right. So it goes like this. Here we go. We got time. I can do it before we before we go. Yeah, we've got time, and then we'll, we'll listen to the ads when you're done. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, so check it out. It goes like this. To North America and Ottawa, Canada, we go. Washington, USA, and Mexico City, Mexico. Across the Gulf, due east, let me take it to Havana, Cuba, and Kingston, Jamaica, from Port of Prince, Haiti. The trip is quick. From Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, up north to Nassau, Bahamas. Then we turn around, we're southeast bound for Basteras and Kits and Nevis. And St. John's, Antigua, and Barbuda to the east. Let's go south to Rousseau, Dominica. Then a bit further to Castries, St. Lucia. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, uh, wait, oh, how did I get messed up? Uh, You're in St. Lucia at the moment. I know, but it's because I was going too slow. Um uh, Meadows and off to the coast of Kingstown, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Then nearly all of the uh, Caribbean countries we've seen. Southwest to St. George's, Grenada. Then let's go to Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Tobago. Stay with me as we leave the Caribbean. Head west to Belmopan, Belize, on the mainland in Central America. Guatemala City, Guatemala, San Salvador, El Salvador, Tegucigalpa, Honduras, Managua, Nicaragua, San Jose, Costa Rica, where we start to make our way into Panama. Panama City, Panama, through this, uh, uh, Northern South America, first capital we hit is Bogota in Colombia, then Caracas, Venezuela, and down the Atlantic coastline we sail to Georgetown, Guyana, Paramero, Suriname, Antiquito, Ecuador, Lima, Peru, Santiago, Chile, that's when we move north to the Andes, to Supre, Bolivia. And further still to Brasilia, Brazil, and now let's head southwest to Asuncion in Paraguay, then off to the coast. We make our way to Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay. That makes 11 South American countries you've seen. The last up on our journeys, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Stick with me, you'll see the key to free your fluency, build and connect planet Earth. Respect. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, and we got an Argentina heart at the end there as well from Silvina, who's from Argentina. That was very marvelous. good. I don't know. I got, caught, I got caught up in Barbados, man. I don't well, know. I want, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a nice place, isn't it? It's, you know, you were there, you were relaxing. <laughs> you know, you were you were sipping on a on a cocktail. I think um, that was it. Exactly. I'm going to shoot off for the adverts, but we'll be back in about two minutes to close off the show. If you, Beautiful. If you'd be fine to to sit with that us. That works so absolutely. Stick with us, everybody. We'll be back very shortly. This episode of Teachers Talk Radio has been made possible with support from Witherslack Group, the UK's leading provider of SEN education and care. They're here to support you too through an ever-growing offer of free resources, including webinars, podcasts, articles and events aimed at supporting teaching professionals like you. Visit their website at www.witherslackgroup.co.uk to find out more. Are you looking to take your phonics practice forward? 
then Little Wondle Letters and Sounds Revised is the program for you. Created by two schools with an excellent track record in phonics, Little Wondle Letters and Sounds Revised will help all children become readers and ensure no child is left behind. The program offers complete support for your phonics teaching, alongside classroom resources and fully decodable readers from Collins Big Cat. To find out more, follow at Letters Sounds on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram or join a free briefing by visiting littlewondelettersandsounds.org.uk Introducing Bulb. With evidence-based learning at the forefront of education, let Bulb digital portfolios help reshape your educational practice. Bulb helps teachers teach and learners learn. Bulb is an easy-to-use, fully accessible digital platform that captures students' digital learning assets in one place, allowing them to evidence their learning and reflect on their growth. Our dedicated team of education specialists are on hand to ensure the bulb fits seamlessly into all of your teaching practices. Come take a look and get a free account at bulbapp.com. Introducing Autism Aspirational Futures, a virtual SEN conference for parents and carers. Do you work with parents or carers of students with autism? If so, this free virtual conference from With a Slack Group can support them and you. Providing inspiring talks from leading experts, offering practical advice on supporting children and young people with autism and associated needs. This very special event will take place during Autism Acceptance Week and is sure to be an enjoyable occasion for everyone wanting to develop their knowledge, understanding and celebrate their children's amazing superpowers. Don't miss out! Register for free at withaslackgroup.co.uk today. With a Slack Group, the leading provider of schools and children's homes for children with special educational needs. But what, as, as we were doing beforehand, oh, he's, he's left and he'll come back again. We'll, we'll get him back in again. We've had a few technical issues today, which is always a glorious thing, of course. Um, but we've fought through it with the help of rhythm and rhyme, which is, uh, which is something that Jason's a big fan of, of course. Um, yeah, so just to recap what we've been over today, we have talked um, all about his, his bursting onto the scene um, back in yeah, around 2010 back in YouTube's infancy, um, where he, he came along um, and, and, uh, and made part of the scene. Um, but his, he seems to be having issues. He's, uh, he's waving at me on Zoom saying he, he, can't be, uh, he can't be seen. So what I'm going to do, I might, I'll unmute him and I'll just make sure I'm quiet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute him here on Zoom. Uh, and I'll let him speak, and, and I'll be quiet when he speaks, so we can connect him there. Uh, so I'm just going to let him know. Um, how about you unmute on Zoom, and we'll go through that way, see if that works. Um, oh, he, he can't be heard through Zoom either. Uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't hear you on Zoom either. He, he's, he's disappeared. He's, he's left us all hanging, and the best thing is, it's, it's a good thing, because it means he's left us wanting more, um, and he can come back for more. He's, um, he's already been invited back. We're going to figure out dates for when he can come back, um, and I think next time, when he's back on in the next time, what we're going to do, we're going to perform a rap together. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, we don't know what it is yet, but we're definitely going to do it. There's, there's, fist, there's air punching from, from, uh, from Jason there in Paris. Um, we will do it together. We'll, we'll wrap together. It's, it, it's undoubted. It's going to happen. Um, we just have to put it in the calendar. Um, and, and yeah, we'll make sure that is something that happens. We might even put a video together when I, while I pop through Paris, if he's there. Um, that would be the dream. 
Um, but for everybody else, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. Um, a huge thank you to Jason, who I really, I can't thank him live on air. But, well, I can thank him. He can hear me. I can't hear him. But I can thank him. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. Um, do join us again next week. We'll be back um, same time as always. Um, and, yeah, I will have Jason on again very, very soon. Um, we're going to be firming up a date in the diary very shortly. But thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, I'll see you next week. Well, I'll hear you next week. You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at ttradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio.